Daniel, uh, 30 years in, who still hasn't heard how AIDS is passed and how one protects oneself? Many people. Uh, there are probably about one-third of the people out there who have HIV who are unaware of their status. And I think when you look at 30 years, you're talking about a whole new generation um, <clears throat> who was not there at the beginning when they were seeing the many people that were dying. Um, that alone was a uh, cause for concern and cause to protect yourself. So you've gotten a new generation out there that while they've grown up in HIV and AIDS, they may not really be as aware about HIV and AIDS as they think they are. And so we think it's really important to really work to educate those young individuals, but we also think it's really important to try and identify those individuals, especially who are unaware of their status, because that's where I think we'll make the biggest inroads. Liliana, um, I, got, I have three kids and they're slightly different ages, and the age at which each of them first heard about the disease in school was younger each time. So maybe I'm, um, I have a little different view, but it seems like between PSAs on TV and radio, between uh, educational uh, institutions, schools, uh, local health facilities where there are posters and brochures everywhere, the message has gotten out pretty well. Are there people who are routinely, though, not reached? Yes, there are. There are still a lot of young people that are not receiving the message at schools. A lot of times, um, the messages are being sent out to a lot of the same places that they have historically been sent out to. So it's our job as advocates to get the word out to those that don't receive it. And there are some schools that don't teach HIV prevention messages. They don't talk about sexual reproductive health. And so we need to ensure that we are getting those messages out to the not only the appropriate age groups, but to the different mechanisms in which the kids interact. You so know, AIDS education is part of what we used to call hygiene in school and, and now is often uh, called um, sex ed. And, and so it's, it's subject to the same kind of pressures in schools that, uh, that talking about human sexuality is? I, I don't know if I can say that, mm -hmm. um, but what I can say is that a lot of schools are facing budget cuts. And so given that budget cut environment, schools are trying to identify what are the core curriculum that we want to focus on. And you know, I would say that sexual education is probably not as important as math, science, reading, writing. Francisco? Um, I, thank you. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity to be here. Um, I do want to remind everyone, though, that you know, we were coming from eight years of administration of the Bush, Bush administration that really was emphasizing abstinence only. And so while there was information being shared at the schools, um, it may not have been as accurate as potentially now as we are moving with a new administration that is more supportive of comprehens comprehensive sexual education. And so while there were messages out there, again, it was focused to you know, abstinence only until marriage. And then what does that leave the gay youth? or the transgender youth. And so I think while there was efforts out there and there has been for the past few years, we did come from an administration, unfortunately, that wasn't as supportive of, of con condom demonstrations at the school, so. Abstinence defenders will point out that it's 100% effective in stopping the spread of HIV. And I agree, um, but you know, we need to be realistic. And so as we know, youth are, are, are sexually active at a younger age now. Uh, you know, gay, lesbian, bisexual men, youth, women are coming out at a younger age. And so if we're not reaching them at the young age, we're, we're missing, a, there's a huge missed opportunity there. In the United States, uh, Mary Beth is the Latino profile of both new cases, active infections, and full-blown manifestation of the disease the same as the American profile? And if it's different, how? The Latinos are disproportionately affected by HIV in the United States. So in terms of new infections, Latinos are two and a half times more likely to get HIV than their Caucasian counterparts. For the men, they're twice as likely. For the women, they're four times as likely. And we tend to focus on sexual transmission, but also injection drug use and sharing needles is important too, because no matter how you look at the numbers for the Latino community, whether it's new HIV cases or AIDS cases or existing cases, one fourth of those injection drug users with HIV are Latino. Why? I mean, what is it about this particular slice of the American population mm -hmm. that makes it vulnerable in a different way from the population as a whole? 
There are a number of different issues. One is that HIV is one of a number of different of, of competing health concerns or competing concerns in general. So immigration status may be a concern, language acquisition may be a concern, getting a job may be a concern, and then when it comes to health, HIV is one of a number of health issues that disproportionately affect Latinos.